Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Uh, appearances is made, especially at church. Yeah, you would, you so would, what, you what conduct, I mean, what conduct are you talking about? No, no, look, mm. even when you appear at church, the kind of message that you preach when you appear at church is that of love, of unity, of uniting the country. You don't go to church and start saying, look, we, we will continue this, we'll continue that. You go to the hospital, there are hospitals out there. You, you don't do that. You, you preach unity. You are supposed to be the one to spearhead uh, the unity in the country. You are supposed to be the statesman. You are supposed to be... Uh, President Lungu, for me, as far as I'm concerned, is missing an opportunity yet again. He's been seriously misled by the people around him. What he needed to do by now is to avail himself to the state, avail himself to his younger brother, who is the current president now, and say, my brother, I am done with active politics. Any assignment you want me to do, I'm here to help you. For example, like I was saying the other day, we have the flood situation in the country and so on. One would have expected that President Lungu would have actually been the one going around the country checking on the flood situation and go to report back to his president now and say, Mr. President, this is what I found on the ground. This is what we need to do for, for our people and so on. He's supposed to be the fountain that we all run to as the elder statesman of the country, being non-partisan. That's what is very crucial, being non-partisan. Meaning that, for example, even if UPND is having internal quarrels within themselves as a political party, they should feel free to go to a former president and say, how did you used to do these things when you were in active politics? And he's able to provide counsel. He's able to provide counsel to various political parties. He's able to provide counsel to government. He's able to provide counsel to uh, uh, CSOs. Okay? But right now, can President Lungu do that? No. Because he's sectarian. He is leader of the Patriotic Front. He's only available to the Patriotic Front. If this government was cruel, really, by now, would have withdrawn on that pension, that, that pension from you. So, so what you're saying right. is that, yes, because that, that's what I wanted to ask. Uh, how is government treating that, it now? That pension kicks in with a condition. Mm. The condition is that you must uh, do away with active politics mm. and the pension kicks in. Remember where it came from. Uh, when Dr. Kaunda left office, he started being active in politics. Uh, I don't know if you would recall or not, but I, I, I'm a scholar of history. Mm. Uh, at one point, uh, Dr. the late Dr. Mainza Chona and uh, the current Zambia's High Commissioner to Malawi, Sapanji Kaunda, had to sit down with the old man and agree with him and negotiate and allow him to get out of politics. It was out of that that the law was coined that you have access to your pension provided you are out of active politics. But if you decide to go back into active politics, your pension falls off because then you are a leader of a competition. You are a leader of a competitive political party. Right now, the Patriotic Front is on record by its own chief executive officer. And the records are even filed before the courts of law in Zambia that this man is still our president and there is no record of him as far as the party is concerned that he has resigned. So, A so, position mm -hmm. that he himself mm -hmm. has not disputed or commented otherwise on. So how is, so that, how, how is, that, that, is government that position, yes, how is government that position, that position deserves, mm -hmm. that position deserves that, that uh, the patient uh, that uh, the, the former president is enjoying ought actually to be uh, withdrawn. Mm -hmm. But because this is not a cruel administration, I could only imagine if the tables were turned and, and President 
uh, Akainde was the former president and President Lungu was in office. By now, Ngom Chancha would have finished him already. But you see, we, we are giving him the benefit of doubt and at the same time hoping that he comes to a realization that what he is going through or what he is uh, being used for by his own people is that they are risking his, uh, his pension benefits mm -hmm. because those kick in when you are non-partisan. Right now he is partisan and he does not uh, deserve to be on that pension but this government has continued to provide that pension because you see Sokotwane, by now would have even withdrawn the state security around the man. He would have been guarded by his own PF uh, cadres or security. The next thing they were even steal his boats and uh, you know leave the fridge or something. But this government is saying he is our former president. Let us give him the respect he deserves. We are still respecting him. His pension continues despite all these things that are actually on record and being proclaimed that he is not a former president of PF. He is the current president of the Patriot. Different. All right, so what you're saying is that uh, government will continue uh, providing what an ex-president or former president deserves. What I'm saying is that government has continued at the moment to provide. So they, I cannot guarantee mm. if government will continue going forward if the status quo does not change around him. That mm. I can't guarantee. So okay, because what, what because are you expecting? What are you expecting from from the former president? To be to be non-partisan. I mean, I'm, I'm to just be saying to, to, to be non aligned to be available mm -hmm. to the states to be available to Zambians. Mm -hmm. He just ought to be a parent, a former president. And he, for you he, he hasn't, that he, he hasn't respect, come out, he hasn't come to deserve it. I, I believe he hasn't come out to decide where he is now, or maybe to answer uh, what uh, his party, the PF, former party PF. Uh, I don't know which title to uh, put. Yeah, but there's a reason why you, there's a reason why you, you, let, let, let me finish. Uh, he hasn't come out, but there's already a documentation that was written from him uh, talking about his retirement in politics in the year 2021. Yeah. So why is it hard for the government to believe what was written, what is on record? I, I get being uh, copied to the PF. No, we don't, we, don't, we, uh, we don't know if it does, was copied does, does to it seem them. To be a problem now? We, don't, we don't even know if it was copied to them or not. What's, what is the problem mm -hmm. is that there is this proclamation sure. that is documented, mm -hmm. it's official, it's even before our courts of law that the man is still uh, the president of the Patriotic Front, therefore puts him uh, into active politics. All right. Let's talk of uh, the, the, the statement uh, that I just partly read. Uh, the U.S. Vice President engaging the former President at Talungu. What, what is your comment? I stated earlier on in Sokotwane that uh, President Lungu remains uh, president of the Patriotic So that's, that's the main reason? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Look, that agenda of what the uh, Vice President is coming to do in Zambia mm -hmm. is drawn between the U.S. government and our government you know, through the Minister of Foreign Affairs and her engagements uh, throughout her, her, her leg in Africa are designed uh, and, 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 and they, they come up with them from the USA. Mm -hmm. She's going to go at this side. She's going, so even when she's landing in the country, mm -hmm. they already know where she's going to go. She's going to start with State House, then she's going to go to a farm, then she's going to go and have a lunch on, then she's going to have a press briefing and so on. Mm -hmm. It's all determined. Now you tell me if, for example, you were you know, like in the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. you, are, you are going to see Edgar Lugu for what? Number one, he's leader of a political party that says don't come here. And we want to protest that you shouldn't come here. Then you, you come here, you, you want to go and see him for what? You want to go and impose yourself on, on the person who's a leader of that political party? 
So it is these things which are robbing him of that status which he so deserves. President Mungu deserves the status of an elderly statesman. But because he's allowing these characters around him to abuse him, they are robbing him of that opportunity. This is another robbed opportunity and it is wrong to even refer to it as a diplomatic blunder. They should take full responsibility for their behavior around him and their proclamations around him. This has cost him an opportunity to be recognized as such because they continue to portray him as their leader when in fact he is not supposed to be their leader. He is supposed now to be the property of the government of the Republic of Zambia mm -hmm. and the property of the people of Zambia. A fountain of uh, wisdom to run to uh, for any member of society or a grouping or organization because he is non-partisan. But for as long as he continues to be partisan, sections of this country will not have access to him, will not be free to go and consult him, will not be free to go and visit him because he fit now. Of course there's debate there as to whether it was only for another day. Mm -hmm. But even he too had to handle hand over authority. These are what is causing the world to marvel at us and say we are a mature democracy. So you snub see you for what? I repeat. Let me repeat. Let me repeat to be clear. Mm -hmm. To go and visit President Mungu right now is to go and visit the president of the Patriotic Front. You might as well visit the president of Adedo Zamkano. You might as well visit uh, the president of uh, Patriots for Economic Progress, uh, uh, Sean Tempo. You might as well go and visit uh, uh, Nasson Musoni. Because they, all of them are at the same status. They are presidents of political parties. Until President Lungu assumes his rightful position, that of an elder statesman, he will continue to be viewed as a head of the political party. A any reasons that were advanced by uh, the former president not to attend the Democratic Summit? No, none. When you snap, you don't even give a reason. I use the word snap. He snapped it. Every function, national function that takes place in this country, I can come here with copies of invitation for every national event that takes place in this country. President Lungu is invited. He snaps. Let's try to. He even snapped the commemoration of the first memorial for President Rupia Banda. So, what, what, what? What does he want? Are there any efforts being made uh, on the part of government to bring some form of unity from the past regime and the what, regime? what would you call an extension of invitation mm -hmm. after invitation, if not recognition? What would you call that? All those are attempts to show that this is where you belong now. Your status is that of the former head of state. And that is why there is, at every function, there is a seat reserved for you. There is a special invitation for you. That question would have arisen if this government does not invite him. Then even he can stand and say, where do you want me to go? Can I force myself when people don't invite me? They don't want me. But he can't say that. Because at every function, he's invited. Every national event, he's invited. He snubs. You're watching this week's edition of Oxygen of Democracy, and my guest is uh, Director and Spokesperson for the Ministry of uh, Information and Media, and discussing quite a number of issues. And uh, uh, Mr. Kaona being my guest, uh, of course, in a few minutes' time, will allow uh, some of the callers to come through and, and seek your clarification on some of the points that you're raising. Uh, let's try to talk about other issues. I, I cannot let you go without uh, seeking answers from you. The situation of uh, the cost of living uh, continues coming up every time there's someone from government and uh, we there's an upward experience of cost of living at the moment and uh, it's the opposite of their campaign promises that were made. 
we described the cost of living uh, under the patriotic front administration as high and the premise or the campaign promises that were made uh, by the current administrator the administrators of that of the government they were saying we'll bring something law and it's the opposite of what was promised what is happening now and what are some of, of, one of, the, of the solutions that we were going to experience from the one, part of government one of the things that is exacerbating the mm -hmm. cost of living is the pressure that the zambian kwacha is under sure. remember we are an import oriented country mm -hmm. and the, the kwacha right now is um, under a lot of stress and pressure which is being exerted um, and exacerbated by the prolonged um, negotiations around debt restructuring. Um, we had envisioned that by the end of this quarter, those talks would have finished. But I think you heard um, Finance Minister Stumbe uh, even today, but trace the point that the kind of proposals that we are making to the people we owe money to, mm -hmm. they feel that uh, we are asking for too much. Everything else that they had asked us to do prior to these talks taking uh, place, we have done. All the boxes have been ticked. It is now the boys in their hands. But now they feel that what we are asking for, the kind of uh, the haircuts, the kind of uh, uh, debt reliefs that we are asking from them are too much. But what we are saying to them as Zambia, uh, together with the IBF, is that yes, they may be too much, but we want to come out with a win-win situation here. Let's agree so that when we sign today, what we have agreed, we are able to fulfill. So that we pay something. We are not able to pay you now uh, the kind of money that we owe you. But uh, if we agree on this and that, then we are able to pay. So give us an opportunity to put us in a position where we are able to service this facility. As it is now, uh, we are unable. So even if you remain adamant on the other side and say, no, this must be done, uh, yes, we may sign, but we are back to square one. We still fail to service the facility as it were. But if we agree on what we are proposing, uh, then we will be able to service. We come out with a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. We are able to service and survive, and you are also able to come up with something than totally nothing. Mm -hmm. Because if you keep us in this position, we will be unable to give you anything at all. Again, it takes us back to the patriotic front. And this is what you know most Zambians are saying, no, 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 don't refer to the patriotic front. It's you there now. But we cannot not refer to the patriotic front because they are the ones that we are over borrowing. They are the ones that when we were in opposition, we were saying to them, you are over borrowing. You will not be able to pay back this money. And what were their answers? Their answers were that we are still within the threshold of the GDP we can borrow up to 30% of our GDP. Therefore, we are still within the 30% who will be able to manage to pay. And when the time came for them to pay out the first coupon, they defaulted. They couldn't pay. And the Zambian people says, move out. Uh, new donor administration come in. And now we have to come in and we have to sort out this mess. They are not the ones uh, uh, negotiating for the restructuring. We are doing that. They are the ones that got that money. And where is that money? People must ask themselves questions. Where is that money? For example, you got the euro bond, and you said to the Zambian people, this money, it, hundreds and millions, we are pumping it into Zambia railways. We are buying new coaches. We are going to rehabilitate the rail line from uh, Mulovezi mm -hmm. up to Chirilabombe, so that there's a new rail line, and uh, these issues of trains derailing becomes a thing of the past. Will buy new coaches and the train will now move quicker. It will be at 80 kilometers per hour. 
all that money is nowhere to be seen. Sure. The Zambia Railways has not gotten any new coaches. Mm. The rail line remains the same. Derailing remains the same. Where is that money? All that money is gone. What was with them? Surely. All right. So they cannot uh, be the ones to start telling us that no, you you are you are raising the cost of living and so on. Uh, we are cleaning up the mess that they created. And I'm sorry, we cannot not refer to them. We have to continue. Even when you go to church, Alex, in church it is envisioned that your congregation there is of the converted. You are born again or you are converted Christians, but still we have to talk about the devil. Why do we have to talk about the devil? So that we do not allow you to backslide mm -hmm. and end up uh, going back to the devil. We have to talk about the PF. We are where we are today because of what they did. So we still have to tell you that yes, we are fixing it, which is what we are doing, but it was created by these people, this is what they did. Right. Why? So that the country should never again find itself in the hands of such people. So that they should not have a situation again where we have got people that will go and borrow on behalf of the nation and the nation has to pay back but the things you claimed you borrowed for, we can't see them. The right. money is nowhere. Mr. Kawane, uh, 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 I'm, I'm glad you've talked about the issue of uh, debt restructuring and, and why it's connected to the current uh, cost of living, the situation rather of the cost of living in this country. Uh, in the news I came, we, we, we had uh, an economist uh, talking about uh, the debt restructuring uh, uh, process that we have in this country. He has predicted that Zambia's debt restructuring that's uh, Dr. Lovinda Abazoka, former EAZ uh, uh, president, has predicted that Zambia's debt restructuring will be very difficult because of conflicting interest from the West and the East. Uh, Dr. Abazoka says the role of China in debt restructuring is very important, but was not handled very well initially despite China being ready to come on the table. These are some of the comments, and I believe uh, the CSOs last week had uh, a detailed discussion on Zambia's debt restructuring structuring process. So, here's a reason being given. That uh, it's, it's, a flawed, we, it's a flawed reason. We, 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 it we, is we a flawed to choose who to talk it to. It is a flawed mm. reason based on misinformation and being told by a prophet of doom. Habazoka, mm. not too long ago in the regime of the PF, is one of those barons. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.